your company, Block Power, is primarily interested, obviously, in infrastructure. You, you, you work to turn our physical surroundings uh, and architecture, actually, into greener and more efficient systems. And of course, this isn't just a nice to have. In many cases, it's a, it's the fundamentally best way of improving our cities. It's urgent, it's necessary. But why is your work so critical? I'm very alarmed about the climate crisis. I'm one of the people that like wakes up in the middle of the night thinking about it and clutching my um, newborn, trying to think about what her life is going to be like when she's my age, when she's 40. So it seemed like a solvable problem. The, the good news is um, that there's been a lot of collapses in the cost of some new computational technologies. I mean, I think we heard about some of them. Yeah. Uh, machine learning is something that it used to be like only a few people could do it. Now every kid who's taking a computer science 101 class in college. Like everyone here. Learning. Should like be doing all it. of you should do machine learning. Yeah. But you all can do it, right? And actually, we do do it when we do the CAPTCHA and they're like, identify how many street lights are in this photo before you sign into whatever app you're using. Um, so the collapse in the cost of machine learning, the distri distribution of cloud computing and mobile computing, these allow us to kind of solve these problems in a way that we never could before um, using some of the methodologies and, and techniques that were described. So um, it's a solvable problem. So since we can green buildings, we should green them because it's an actionable, achievable way to address the climate crisis right now. And when we do it, we create local American jobs that can't be outsourced. We move off of foreign you know, oil and gas. Um, we make buildings healthier, we make them more valuable. It's just a smart thing to do that makes economic sense as well as climate sense. Both of you are surrounded by <clears throat> other um, energetic young people who are kind of born from a, you know, a different, or poured into a different mold than previous generations. And there's a lot of energy there that wants to solve some of these problems. And yet I don't think the world is generally aware of this ecopreneur revolution, this army of ecopreneurs that exists. What's your experience of, of kind of the millennial and Gen Z and, ha and what they want to really do? When I started Grow in 2014, I chose to start it in Kenya. So our offices are, we're co-headquartered between New York and Kenya now, but I moved back to Africa, started in a new city, and this was before sort of the African tech revolution was taking off. People thought I was nuts. Like when I went to Silicon Valley to go pitch, they're like, uh, what, a bunch of Kenyan engineers can solve a technical challenge this complex? Like, lit I had people actually say that to me. Yeah. And today, we read about you know, I ideas being funded actually out of places like Sub-Saharan Africa, where the challenges are so dire, and so therefore the innovations are actually, they work and they scale. But there was this idea that innovation only came from America. That, that has been broken.